So, Tim, Wednesday again already, last week in October. Do you believe that to be true? Yeah, I, it's, uh, yeah. isn't it flying by? Yeah, I mean, really. I, you know, these are the months I really like, actually. Me you know, too. The trees are coming out, everything looks new and all the rest of it. But All of that stuff. Uh, it's skipping by, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And we've got our awards dinner on Friday, October 30, so the day after tomorrow. There is still about, oh, 45 minutes to register. So if you haven't registered, get on and do it right now. It is going to be, um, the entertainment alone is going to be worth tuning in for, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, um, I think uh, those uh, those who uh, have just witnessed my mm, will understand um, on Friday. Yes, indeed. Yes, um, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now we were lucky enough to attend a briefing from Bill Evans, the um, economist from Westpac, this week. It was really interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He is uh, has has a remarkable talent of. Of firstly um, being really, really good in his space, and secondly, yeah. which is uncommon, being able to explain it. Um, yeah. So I uh, I left that uh, in pretty good shape to understand um, what was going on, which is pretty rare when you deal with an economist. Yeah, totally. But in short, uh, without going through the entire thing, he is very, very positive for the yeah. outlook for the economy uh, and the housing market. Potentially a soft spot in the sort of end of the first quarter, second quarter of next year, when maybe some of those deferrals um, impact the market. But outside of that, very bullish in the predictions, I thought. Yeah, no, he was. Uh, the, the thing that uh, everyone is fearing is when JobKeeper comes to an end, what they're yeah. talking about, the cliff. But he made two comments about that. Firstly, he said people aren't spending the money they're getting, so their bank okay. accounts are, are filling up. And I mean... He's, uh, he's in a bank, so he'd know that better than anyone. Well, I mean, I know that from myself, and you must be the same. I mean, I'm just not spending the kind of money I was spending before, so... No. And so, you know, that was a point he made. And the second thing I think we can take comfort from was he said the government will go in and target those industries yeah. that are still suffering. Yeah, that's right. Well, OK, that's going to mean a pretty soft landing for everybody. For most, yeah, I, absolutely. I Let's hope. He was pretty positive, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Um, now, we've been talking a lot about the word, word authorised, um, and I believe that the government are going to explain what that actually means in terms of authorising trust money in their Property Matters newsletter that's due to come out tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, so it was supposed to come out last week, um, this particular <laughs> issue, but they contacted me and said they... It hadn't uh, made that addition, yeah. uh, but it but it will be coming out uh, allegedly uh, tomorrow or the next day. Okay, um, sounds good. Yeah, it does. But just uh, just one other thing. Look, uh, sure. that is the solitary way that fair trading communicates with the market. Yeah. Um, and for that re for that reason, I think everybody out there should uh, subscribe to that newsletter. Yeah. Um, so that you you know you are at least getting the information that they're pushing out there. Yeah, uh, it's important because we try and confirm. Um, you know, you being a lawyer, you get very um, focused on the detail, and we need to be focused on the detail because that's what people are going to rely on if something goes wrong down the track. And property matters is the only way that they actually confirm all of that stuff in writing, and so that's why we're so fixated on getting it into that document, right? That's right. I mean, the, the word authorised and that sort of stuff, and as you yeah. know, I have been fixated on it, yes, and I still have. am. Um, <laughs> but if that's if that's their definition of authorised, that's terrific, but I want to see it in a document coming from them yeah. rather than the, an explanation we've had, um, you know, over the phone or this Yeah, video. totally. We need to be able to rely on it if something goes wrong down the track. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we are um, keen to hear from anybody who is trying to employ somebody that is waiting to get their um, their certificate, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if, if people, if if one of your would be employees um, has lodged a certificate for registration and they're still waiting, I'd like to hear from them. Thank you. Okay, um, and class one and class two, the upgrades, um, waiting, like the, the time is just blowing out, we know that. And also we are still waiting to get clarity on how people get their refunds. We've had an update as recently as today on that and the update was still, we're trying to streamline the process. 
I think it's I think it's called a check. You you put somebody's name on it and you and put some numbers on it and you sign it and send it to them. That's how you get a refund. Yeah. It's complicated. Not, yeah, it is complicated. But anyway, we are on it and we are on it every single week. So we'll wear yeah. them down eventually as we do. Um, commercial and retail leases. There's been some changes again. And there was. There was some changes. Yeah. What, so what uh, true to form, um, the uh, last Saturday was the day that the six months was up from the original regulation that came out for right. uh, retail and commercial leases. So on late Friday afternoon, we were advised that they were going to extend it from, um, from the, the Saturday of last week all the way through to the 31st of December. Now, extending it means extending it, that's great. Um, but um, we got zero notice yet again um, of this thing happening, which was which was disappointing um, not to be able to get out into the market and let people know it was coming. Because there would have been a lot of people would have would have been saying to themselves, righto, this thing comes to an end on Saturday. So we will start to uh, move forward with a different set of plans about recovering some of the deferred rent and all these sorts of things, only to find out late Friday afternoon it being extended. So mm -hmm. anyway. Frustrating. Okay. It is. Um, there's a prop prop tech event coming up on the 10th and 11th of November. What's that all about? So uh, yeah, um, that is coming up, um, and we have been able through REIA to secure some um, some uh, discounts for people. Okay. So um, we'll put that in an e in the part of the EDM, and and uh, also the links in there so people can gain a little bit further understanding of what uh, what is available through that. Not surprisingly, yep. it's uh, all online. So, um, so you're able to you're able to achieve that, I think, okay. and um, and there's some uh, like I said a discount there. Um, and the um, the subsidy for traineeships, where are we up to with that? I know you spoke to Minister Cash um, very recently. Yeah, so uh, we did earlier this week. So there is a bucket of money. I think it's one point something billions dollars. I love buckets of money. You. Um, and there are 100,000 places, okay. uh, traineeship places across all the industries, including real estate. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's terrific. So now is the time to act. Um, if you contact our training department, they'll walk you through it. It's, it's not as simple as, um, as people might have first thought. It will depend on the circumstances of the trainee and the circumstances of the business. Okay. But if the... If the federal traineeship doesn't fit the business, then we have solutions for the state-based traineeship. So, so I think the, the first thing to do so you don't miss out is contact the training department, tell them that you're interested in taking on some train, a trainee or trainees, plural, um, and then they can walk you through your options. But it's too good of an opportunity to miss. So um, let you know, have a look at it while the Buckets of money that you and I love so much are floating around out there. Absolutely. Let's get part of it. Okay. Well, I will give Nerida a call about that myself this afternoon. Um, border, they're talking about um, agents being able to work across borders, which um, on the face of it sounds like a really good idea, but actually when you drill in, it's not. Nah, it's not a good idea. So so what they've done is, uh, and, and it hasn't happened yet, and I'm given to understand that... Um, that it won't happen until the middle of next year, but I'm keen to get on the front foot with this. Yeah. Um, you know how mutual recognition works, that if yeah. you've got a, uh, a licence in one state, then you can jump the border and, uh, and go and get a licence in another state yeah. without doing any additional education and you get, you get licence there. Well, I have, a, uh, I have a problem with that because all of the laws and rules and everything else change from one state to the next. But... To streamline that and to make it even sillier, if you've got a licence in um, in one state, um, you don't have to go, well, you won't, is what it's been suggested, go and get the equivalent licence register in another state. So by way of some practical application, um, if you're here in New South Wales and choose to go and have a holiday in um, on the Gold Coast, and while you're up there, you run into somebody who wants to sell their house, you go, I'm it, I'm the one. Um, we'll give it a crack while I'm here, um, which is just 
just ludicrous until they harmonise the laws. And that's the thing, right? It's what, and yet we know that the skills required to sell property are the same, but the rules of the legislation and the contracts and all of that stuff is different in each state across the country. So, that's right. Um, so, yeah, unless you understand all of those rules, um, you just can't. You can't sell the property. No. No, it's ridiculous. Okay, so um, talk to me about two-step author or authorization or authentication authentication that's the word um because we've had a couple of really sad yeah. stories around um people's money going missing so so we were aware of um of instances where agents have uh contacted the the vendor by way of some example and said look i've got a great chunk of money now in my trust account yeah yours i want to send it to you can you tell me what your um bank details are and they write back allegedly and say yes it's uh, ABC and yeah. the agent sends it off to, uh, to that area only to find out later on that the either the vendor's um, trust uh, sorry uh, email's been hacked or the agent's email's been hacked and of course the fraudster is the one that makes all the cash. Now we were aware of that and and in fact in the commissioner's guidelines they talk about um, the author. Now, I can't do it. Man. <laughs> it's your fault. Um, I'm not going to say the word now because I can't okay. say it. Yeah. So, so that they said you should do it in two different ways. You'd make a phone call, oh, see, text, yeah. or this sort of stuff, just to make sure that you have authenticated well done. Um, the, uh, the, the banking details. And that's yeah. good. But what's happened now is um, it's gone into reverse. So... So when um, when the agent has contacted the um, uh, the, the purchaser or or, or uh, similar circumstances and said, "Here is my trust account details. You put the money into my trust account. If you're putting the ten percent deposit in there, um, in those circumstances, similarly, the fraudsters have gotten in the middle of that, and there's been there's been two. Uh, large sums of money that have gone missing in the last couple of weeks. So, and so the buyer's money, the buyer's 10% deposit or settlement funds have gone missing. Um, and so who's responsible? Does the, the agent's um, insurance may not cover them in that situation, right? Well, there's a, there's a few things to go looking at. Um, the first thing would be to determine whose email got hacked. Yeah, okay. Because it, essentially whoever, okay. whoever it was, it... It is arguably their fault. Their responsibility, yeah. Right. Um, and then the the second thing, uh, comforting with of some comfort at least, is that there is access to the uh, compensation fund, the statutory compensation okay. fund. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and lastly, obviously, you'd be looking at your PI, but that that would be the steps to determine. Um, or where the liability and, and if it was the buyer's email that got hacked, then potentially the um, agent's insurance won't cover it, and so they're just going to be out that money, right? Well, they would have access to the statutory fund. Ah, uh, okay, okay, mm. right. Mm. Oh, boy, so yeah. in short, don't use did. email. Don't use email to confirm banking details ever. Um, talk to people on the phone, SMS. How else do you do it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I I don't think there's anything wrong with email if you get the thing through. But but what I would also be doing is um is is picking up the phone and, and confirming when you get the email. Yeah, so so they're talking about those, you know, authenticating it twice um and um and 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 to try and address that problem. And so, we've got a fraud. Um, we've got a uh, webinar this Friday. Um, yeah. covering um, fraud issues. So yeah, that'll, right. be a, that'll be a really interesting one. Yeah, it will. Yeah. It's sad that we've got to put so much energy oh, into this, but we just yeah. do. Yeah, we do. So, um, short, short term accommodation, what's going on with that? So after an incredible journey, um, they finally come out with uh, a set of uh, guidelines. Well, not guidelines, they're calling it a code. So there is a code of conduct that has finally come through. Um, we had a lot of input into that as did a lot of other stakeholders. And um, we'll, we will make that uh, available to uh, to people who uh, practice in this area. It'll, okay. There'll be a link in our EDM that goes out. Um, it's a reasonably readable document, um, but essentially it prescribes how you have to 
uh, conduct yourself and ensure that your tenants who are there having their holiday conduct themselves so as the peace and good order of the neighbourhood is disturbed. Okay. Um, now, there's also been some changes to social gatherings. We can have 30 people at home. Um, so what impact does that have on open and options? What a good question. Because you would recall a little while ago that we, uh, we talked about the requirements uh, in relation to auctions and opens and all of that, and we told people what that looked like. Yeah. Um, that hasn't changed. Now, there's been a little bit of confusion because recently government said that you could have um, 30 people at a gathering, a social gathering, say in the park for a barbecue and these sorts of things. And there has been an assumption that that must also apply to auctions and open. It doesn't. Okay. So, so we are, we still have the same rules that you and I spoke about previously, about the number of people that could be at the auction, number of which people. Is, um, which is based on the size of the property, right? It's a four yeah, square yeah, metre rule, that, there's no number. Yeah, the four square metres and, uh, and these sorts of things. Um, but yeah, yeah, so, um, so all of that noise, if I can call it that, about social gatherings and, and all of that, that's, that does not impact Separate. on the obligation sitting around that. I also um, understand that um, our compliance with that may not have been as stellar as we would have hoped. Uh, in real, yeah, I've been hearing um, people talk about the fact that a lot of agents are not complying with social distancing rules when it comes to open homes. They're just letting 40 or 50 people in at one go. It's like, you know, people get over yourselves, just just play by the rules. We are not out of the woods with this thing yet. No, no, we are not. We've, you know, well, I think we're doing an incredible job. But, yeah, there's no doubt about that, but we just but can't you don't want to be the one that all, do you? No, we do not, no, we do not need an, an open home cluster anywhere. No. Okay, what have I forgotten? Um, what have you forgotten? It's bound to be something on your secret list. Yeah, I know. No, I think you've got it today. I think you've oh done a good job. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, off you go then. Enjoy All the rest right. of your afternoon and I'll, um, I'll see you at the awards um, on Friday. Yeah, I'll see you on Friday. Can't wait. We'll all be dressed up. Yes, we will. Okay, make sure you dress. Make sure you're in black tie. Oh, that was the question. Is it uh, we have to wear black tie? Yes, do we? we do. Of course, we do. All yeah. right. Okay, I'm in it. I'm on it. All right. Bye. Bye.